How weird would it be to walk into a law firm or meet your house renovator and realize the person you're working with is a former superstar musician? Those things could happen because some former musicians have given up the limelight and now work totally normal jobs. Few rappers rose to fame as quickly as Vanilla Ice did back in 1990 when Ice Ice Baby was all over the radio and his album To The Extreme was number one for four months. But it's also true that few rappers have gone out of favor as quickly as Vanilla Ice did. Between acting in his own movie, to his cameo in and theme song for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles flick, to his follow-up album that yielded no hits and didn't even chart, Ice felt hard and fast. At one point in the mid-90s, he was left just dabbling in music while building a reputation as a competitive jet ski racer, before returning to the studio to make a rap metal album aimed at the Limp Bizkit crowd. But then Ice did something remarkable. He took some of those Ice Ice Baby residuals and invested in real estate. He became quite adept at buying properties, fixing them up, and reselling them at a higher value, a practice commonly known as flipping. To the surprise of just about everyone but Ice himself, he was really good at it. He became more or less a full-time real estate mogul and remodeling expert, creating his own company and even starring in his own reality TV series, The Vanilla Ice Project on the DIY Network. He still tours occasionally, but his hip-hop concerns take a backseat to his house-flipping responsibilities. You know, it's not so pimped out, but we pimped it out. <laughs> we rock-started out. I guess if a rapper's going to renovate a home, you have, to, you have to do it that way. You have to showcase your skills. Neo-soul singer Erica Badu has been a practicing doula since 2001, helping dozens of mothers deliver their babies either at home or in birthing rooms. A doula is a non-medical individual who provides physical and emotional support to mothers and their families during and after childbirth. Badu refers to her role as, quote, the welcoming committee, as she helps usher new life into the world and serves as a calming presence for mothers. She told Origin magazine in 2013, I started studying on my own, different techniques, and the variables of what being a doula is about. I learned to originally be like water, in the place that I was, so that I could be a container for whatever they need. I love being of service in that way. Badu estimates she has helped bring more than 40 babies into the world, and she keeps up with all of them. She also spends time in hospice centers, sitting at the bedsides of and providing comfort to those who are close to death, as she works for people's spirits to be at peace. The 70s sitcom The Partridge Family was broadcast for four seasons in its initial run on ABC and has gone on to enjoy a much longer life in syndication. One of the memorable characters was Danny Partridge, the redhead preteen bass player who was always ready with a sardonic comment. For Danny Bonaducci, the actor behind that role, life was never the same after the show went off the air. He had infrequent acting jobs, got into trouble on occasion, and slowly adjusted to life as a former child star. In the late 80s, Bonaducci began a career in radio, signing on at WEGX in Philadelphia. In subsequent years, he moved around the United States, taking on work at various stations while still maintaining his status as a celebrity. Today, he broadcasts in Seattle, doing a morning drive-time show on a classic rock station. He's been a staple there since 2011, and he says it's right where he wants to be. He told the Seattle Post-Intelligencer in 2011, Seattle is the most beautiful city I have ever seen. The first time I visited, I thought someone put a major metropolitan city in the middle of Yosemite National Park. I can't believe I get to live and work here. In the 70s, Al Green was one of the most popular singers in the country. Hits like Let's Stay Together and Love and Happiness made him a household name, and virtually anything he wanted, like women, drugs, and other indulgences, was his for the asking. But fame and fortune weren't making him happy. He began to revisit his Christian faith to find some meaning in it all. Then, on one tragic afternoon, he was taking a bath when his girlfriend rushed into the bathroom and dumped scalding hot grits on him, leaving him severely burned. She then retreated to another room and killed herself with one of his guns. Green then retreated somewhat from the limelight, becoming an ordained minister and releasing a handful of secular records before abandoning popular music in favor of gospel for nearly a decade. In December 1976, he opened the Full Gospel Tabernacle Church in Memphis, and he has preached there most Sundays ever since. Often, regular church members have to share the pews with visitors who come for the experience of seeing Green preach. In 2016, he told the Houston TV station KHOU, You might have to come on your vacation. We get a lot of that. Well, we say while you're here, why don't we do a little bit of amazing grace? It may help you along your way. In 1991, David Kelly was opening shows for national acts like A Tribe Called Quest and Arrested Development. Later, he joined the hip-hop group All Natural, with whom he would record five albums. And in 2010, he made a solo album, Polymath, which the Chicago Tribune named Independent Album of the Year. He went by the stage name Capital D, aka Cap D. A native of Chicago, Kelly is now known as the general counsel for the NBA's Golden State Warriors. 
He made the change from full-time rapper to part-time rapper and full-time University of Illinois Law School student after getting married in 2000. After graduating, he joined a prestigious Chicago law firm, and two years after that, he joined the Warriors. In 2018, he told the legal blog Above the Law, I always try to be more thoughtful than your typical rapper. Political stuff, racial issues, just the image people have of the black man or black people, I wanted to attack that. The image that black people have of themselves, I wanted to attack that. Kelly still dabbles in rap, but these days it's more of a hobby or a way to surprise new Warriors players who don't believe that their lawyer can spit a verse or that he once judged Eminem in a rap competition. And he's still putting out tracks, and it's great stuff. In the late 70s and 80s, Jeff Skunk Baxter was one of the most sought-after guitarists around. He played on countless recording sessions and incorporated his six-string music into two of the era's biggest bands, Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers. In the mid-80s, he became fascinated with how similar music recording technology was to the technology guiding the United States' defense systems. His neighbor, a retired engineer, got him interested in military-related publications, which turned into Baxter writing a paper on converting an existing military ship-to-air missile system into one for military defense. He didn't know it at the time, but his second career as a defense consultant had just begun. I started having a great music career and then started doing things for, uh, for the U.S. government. Baxter has gone on to expand his knowledge into areas of counterterrorism, and he's regularly called upon to play the role of an enemy force in defense strategy war games. In these scenarios, he's known for his creativity and tactics that very closely resemble those in which enemies might engage. In 2005, he confessed to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, I'm told I make a very good bad guy. Terry Chimes was a founding member of the great British punk band The Clash. He drummed on their universally acclaimed 1977 debut album, providing the rhythm and propulsion for songs like White Riot and Career Opportunities. He left after that record, but then he returned in 1982 to see the band through its greatest commercial moments. After leaving The Clash yet again, he drummed for bands as diverse as glam rockers Hanoi Rocks and metal icons Black Sabbath before giving up music as a full-time occupation. Chimes turned to healthcare, becoming a chiropractor in 1993 and going on to open five clinics in London. He estimates that he's provided patients with more than 250,000 treatments. He's an outspoken advocate for overall health and wellness, giving lectures and supporting charities that are likewise inclined. He told the BBC in 2006, People say, how can you prefer treating patients to being on stage in front of 100,000 people? But if you can get someone healthy, there's a satisfaction in that which is much more profound. In the mid-90s, if you were a fan of British rock, you had to make a choice between either Oasis or Blur. The two bands seemed to vie for the top of the charts more or less constantly. There was some great music being made between both of them, until Oasis broke up and the members of Blur spun off to do side projects, reuniting every few years to release new music together. Their individual projects were varied. Singer Damon Albarn, for example, formed the virtual band Gorillaz. Drummer Dave Roundtree went a different route as he became a computer animator and owner of his own animation company, flew planes, and went to law school and became a criminal lawyer. That last occupational shift was particularly telling of his interests. While at one point serving as a temporary paralegal, he told the legal blog Above the Law that he was fascinated by the trials he covered. He has served as a solicitor, which is someone who provides advice to clients, drafts documents, negotiates, and prepares cases for trial. In 2017, he was elected to the County Council in Norfolk, England as a member of the Labour Party. At the peak of their fame, the Jonas Brothers released platinum albums, packed arenas, and even had their own TV show. When they split up in 2012, Kevin Jonas stayed busy as the star, along with his wife Danielle, of the reality series Married to Jonas, which documented the couple's domestic life. During the hiatus before the Jonas Brothers finally got back together in 2019, Kevin embraced another passion, far removed from the lights and glitz of the pop star life. He became a contractor, forming Jonas Werner Fine Custom Homes and embarking on a completely different professional path from his musician brothers. This isn't simply a hobby or a passing fancy for someone with too much time who would rather be doing something else. Jonas told the New York Daily News in 2014, I've always looked at everything I do as a business, including the Jonas Brothers. I like to get my hands dirty. I've been blessed in my life where I get to say, you know what, I want to do this. Who's next to d design their landscaping? In sync? Let's get Lance Bassin on this Growing up, Greg Graffin had what he once called a, quote, congenital distaste for authority. He rebelled against all forms of oversight, particularly those authority figures with dogmatic attitudes. His most immediate, visceral response to such people can be found in his music, which he's made with his punk band Bad Religion since 1980. Through his lyrics, Graffin has spoken directly to audiences, providing them with food for thought and ammunition to use in arguments against those people and institutions that would hold them down. 
Outside of music, Graffin works in academia. He holds a PhD in zoology from Cornell University and acts as a lecturer in life sciences, paleontology, and evolution. Regarding his personal life, he does not subscribe to any religion, though he doesn't consider himself an atheist. He instead argues that he's a naturalist. He told the Denver Post in 2010, I want some fact-based evidence about where we came from. Things we consider mysterious need not be attributed to a deity. In a way, such beliefs are a continuation of a lifelong rebellion against authority. And today, you know, the, at punk rock shows, you see just as many students as you do music fans. Many of them, like myself, are both. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite musicians are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.